Welcome back to Launching Big, all about launching new things, launching churches, launching new ministries. And this is part of a series of videos, 26 to be exact, as we use each letter of the alphabet to talk about a different part of the launch process. So today is P, the power of prayer when you are launching something. So this one's gonna be a little weird if you are randomly watching this on YouTube and you're not a Christian. Um, I'm glad you're here. And I would actually encourage you to stay and still watch this chapter because there really is power when you have this, this source, it's Jesus Christ, but whatever source you want to say, uh, empowering you to move forward and really, really, really connecting with God on a deeper level. If you are here randomly and you're not a Christian, message me in the comments if you have any questions about God and kind of why. Uh, I'd love to talk through that and then watch the rest of this and just see, see if it affects you. Okay, now, what is so weird about the power of prayer and why it has to be one of the 26 lessons of launching something is how much we don't do it. That is weird. If we believe in God and we believe in the power of God and who he is, why would we not make prayer just this active part of every week as we're launching something it's so interesting that we could go weeks without praying i mean i'm going to assume you probably pray at meals uh, you probably even talk to god occasionally randomly throughout the day maybe when you go to bed when you get up you have a quick prayer but what i'm talking about is those times when you turn everything off computers books set aside everything and you get alone with god for an hour and you just pray. Like I pray with people, I pray in different situations. I'm a pastor. Um, I have a lot of moments of praying from the stage or through a Bible study uh, with my kids and even in counseling. But scheduling a time where I just get alone with God for an hour, why is that hard for me? That is something that needs to be a habit on a weekly basis. So in this chapter, as we push into this, I wanna give you just a simple outline to add to your life every week as you're launching this new thing. In fact, let me give you the homework right here at the beginning. Homework assignment one, pull out your phone right now, okay? Mine's all weird, but whatever. Pull out your phone, hit the calendar button, and put into your schedule the one hour that you're going to do this week, but set it on recurring, okay? So whatever you choose, this time, whichever time, whatever time it's gonna be in the week, I want you to show it to me when we, when we do our coaching time together. But what's that one hour a week that is just for prayer? And is it on recurring every week? Homework assignment two is go ahead and do it this week when you put it in there, but follow this outline. And if you follow this outline, I think you'll find it is really powerful in these times of prayer. Here's the outline. The first five minutes when you get alone with God for prayer, you spend it in what I call awe, the awe of God. Just looking around and going, man, seriously, the galaxies, the God who formed the world, the beautiful nature, the majestic mountains, the vast seas, you know, be poetic. How, how can we not stand in awe of this creation and God who did it? And just wonder, like, how? How did you do it? You're just so big. It's hard to believe the awe. You know, we get so caught up in the mundane daily task of a day that we stop to look or we stop looking around going, man, this life is incredible and I need to be in awe of it. And there's so many verses that do this. My favorite is Psalm 150, where it says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord in the sanctuary, praise him in the heavenly realms, praise him in his mighty deeds, praise him in his excellent greatness, praise him with a trumpet sound, a harp, a lyre, praise him with timbrel and dancing, praise him with instruments and pipe, praise him with loud cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals, the clanging of cymbals, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. See, that's the kind of verses we need to have memorized and just put them out there going, God, I need to just stop, take five minutes of my hour and be in awe of you. Be in awe. Honestly, there's no end to how long we could do that. But let's just take five minutes and make sure that we're doing it. The second one is confession. This is the next five minutes. 
the next five minutes in this hour is when we stop and say, yeah, I've messed up. And unless, and here's the thing about this one. You might have some sins from the week that you just immediately want to confess. That's fine. Do that. But the ones that are actually the ones you want to be thinking about are the seven deadly sins that the Bible speaks about. The Bible says there's seven sins that you're going to struggle with your whole life. I call them creeper sins. It's pride, greed, lust, gluttony, sloth, wrath, and envy. Those are the seven that you will struggle with every day for the rest of your life. And those are the seven that you need to confess every time you get with God. The reason I call them creeper sins is from Minecraft, the video game. Minecraft is so funny. It has this really, really lame enemy. Um, he's called the creeper. I think he's called the creeper. He might have a different name. I'm really not into Minecraft, but I know the, I have played it like one time. And I look over and I go, that's the enemy. And I kind of laugh because it's slow and it bounces. And you're like, whatever. And you're like digging over here on doing something in the game. And you look over, he's a little closer, keep digging. You look over, he's a little closer, keep digging. But he's not a threat. He just doesn't, you don't see him as a threat because he's slow and he's just ridiculously bouncing towards you, but not very fast. And then here's, here's what's even funnier. When he gets next to you, if you've ever played this game, he then slowly blows up. So even if you, even if you, you know, like, oh, he got there. You could still run away. Here's what's so weird. I've been killed by this thing. Why? Because you're digging and you forget about the creeper. And you, even when he's next to you, it's not like he's talking. He's just slowly blowing up. And if you don't look over, you don't realize, oh, he, he just killed me. That's what these seven sins are. It, you can get away with a few days of pride. You can get, you know, you can have lust. Some of you have had lust for years, right? You just kind of notice everyone who walks by a little more than you probably should. Gluttony. Um, I've seen a few overweight people. Yeah, gluttony's out there. We're, we go a little too far with, with how much we enjoy that ice cream. And we're okay with that for a little bit. We can handle that for a little bit. But it creeps and it creeps and it creeps until it blows up in our life. Confess that. You only have five minutes. This is why this hour will go fast if you follow this outline. The next 10 minutes is planning. This is my favorite part. I love this because I have all these plans. <laughs> Just, I love it. And I'm like, God, I want to do this. God, I want to do this. God, I want to do this. And I'll say some of that, but then I'll stop and I'll go, your ways are higher than my ways. I'm getting a little excited with this one. I don't know why. I just, I get pumped about plans. I just, I want to do so much for God. And so I need to take 10 minutes and go, God, your ways are higher than mine. What are your plans? What's your greater plan? I'll throw out all my plans for your plans. Help me, Lord, understand the God-sized plans where you're working and I step into it instead of me doing something and asking you to step into it. What are your plans? Strive to advance the kingdom of God by being in God's plans. So this is that 10 minutes that you continue to say, what are your plans? Here's what I'm doing, okay? You don't have to sit there and wait for the plan to drop. No, here's the things I'm doing. Here's what I'm working on. Is this correct? Uh, how, how, where are you moving that I need to be adjusting my plans in your direction? 10 minutes. The next 10 minutes is thankfulness. We need to give thanks to God. Sometimes it's hard to be thankful. Why? Because life sucks. <laughs> it really does. There's a lot of times when I don't feel very thankful. And I have to stop in this hour and go, no, you've blessed me with an incredible wife. I usually start with wife. You've blessed me with just amazing kids. You've blessed me with the ability to have health today, um, to go to the golf course, if I'm going to the golf course, whatever. You just, you're thankful for a job if you still have a job. And if you don't have a job, you're thankful that you have food today. You're thankful that you have a car. Thankful that you have the ability to still decide things, a mind that still works. Just go on and on in thanks. Philippians 4.4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always again. I will say rejoice. The Lord is near. 
be anxious in nothing, and the peace of God that surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's good, think upon these things. See, that's what we have to do on a daily basis. Think upon these things, the good stuff. And there is good stuff. Paul is commanding us in these verses, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. He's being thankful. And he had a lot of reasons not to be. There's a lot of good and bad in our world. We still have to be thankful. God is still, still using us. The next 10 minutes is petitioning. So this is when you're asking God for blessings. God bless me. Do you know it's okay to say, God bless me? It's okay. The, scripture, there's the, the Bible is full of scriptures that say, God, I need your blessings. My only suggestion is don't start there. That's, that's when you hear, like when I see prayer requests come in, it's like immediately about a blessing they want. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. The Bible says we, we're supposed to do that. I'll give you some verses that we're supposed to do that. I just don't like starting there. And that's probably a me thing. Let's start with these other things first. And then call, as the Bible tells us to, on the blessings of God. Lord, I need your blessings. You are a powerful God. You are an active God. You are a living God. And I believe that you can do anything. If that's the case, then I'm going to tell you exactly the things and my weaknesses that I need from you. The only the struggle here is, doesn't he already know? This is, <laughs> this is my mind. Doesn't he already know where we're struggling and where we need help? I still think he wants us to confess it and say, God, bless me here. I need your help here. Ephesians 6.18 says, with all prayer and petitioning, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with perseverance and petitioning for all of the saints. Now, those verses are talking about petitioning for others, asking for blessings to others. I think that's a really important key to remember. We're supposed to want God's best for everyone, including ourselves. But a lot of times we are envious and we have those creeper sins of lust and greed and coveting and wanting from someone, so whatever someone else has when we're supposed to pray blessings on all. All right. Always pray in this context. God, what is your will? This isn't like bless me with a Ferrari. Bless me with, you know, if you want to pray that way, I don't care. Do it. But the truth is we need to be asking God for blessings within his will. He wants good things for you. He wants good things for me. Now pray for those blessings in the will of his plan. All right. So the next one is intercession. You're ready. You've worked through all these other sections. Now you're ready to fight. And I call it fighting because we're going to put on the armor of God and we're going to go up against the devil. This is only 10 minutes, but you have to be like, I'm going to take on the devil. <laughs> It sounds so weird, right? But the truth is there is a spiritual warfare happening all the time. So you get in there and you go, I, I'm, I'm ready to fight. The enemy will not have victory. The enemy will not win. Here's, here's the victory we're going to have against the schemes of the evil one. This is why it's good to be alone. It's good to be somewhere where you can be a little loud. I'm not necessarily a loud person, but I try and pray with a little bit of voice here. And the way I usually do it is Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's against the spiritual war. So what do we do? I usually say this out loud. I'm going to put on the shoes of peace. Right now, I'm putting on the shoes of peace, knowing that you're in control, that you still have me in a world that's gone nuts. I'm putting on my belt of truth. That means I hold up my pants. I keep my decency knowing truth, knowing the real right way in this world. With that in mind, I put on the breastplate of righteousness, which I'm going to choose good, and I'm going to protect my heart, right? Protect my heart by choosing the right way every day. And I'm going to put the helmet of salvation on, protecting my brain. My brain tells me that salvation is real, that heaven is real, and that all of this in this world is icing on a cake that I already have in heaven, right? If you have heaven already, if you have Jesus Christ, just put around your brain that you're protected. And you are set. 
you've punched that ticket to heaven and everything here is a bonus and start to say it. This is a bonus. I'm going to fight and I'm ready. Got my shield of faith, which knows that I understand that God is real and I'm ready and I have the scripture to back it. This is where you get your Bible and you read the scriptures that tell you why you have faith. And then using the same scripture, you pull out your sword, which is the sword of the spirit, knowing that the Holy Spirit is fighting for you every day. You feel the power of this. It's only 10 minutes. This hour flies by. If we're doing this plan, this hour flies by. But you're saying out loud in intercessory prayer, God is going to win. Finally, the last 10 minutes, we stop and we listen how often we forget to just listen. See, we've been speaking a lot and talking a lot and praying a lot. And God's up there going, okay, I have more to say to you. And he, he probably, he can speak into all the other times as well. But just make sure you're given 10 minutes to stop and listen. Let God speak to your heart. Let God finish your prayer. Maybe there's nothing there. In fact, here's what I have found. I'll do this, let's, let's, I'm not gonna say I do it every day, but I do it fairly often. And about the every seventh time, so let's say that takes, let's say it takes a month, all right? If I do this seven times a month, I guarantee you in one of those seven times, God speaks. In that last 10 minutes, he says something. And it's this really, really amazing moment where I go, oh, and now I get it. So let me ask you this. If you're only doing this once a month, maybe less, some of you, it's probably two, three times, three, three months will go by before you actually give God a full hour of prayer. Okay, seven times means once a year, you have this incredible moment with God. And if you're really honest with yourself, that's what it feels like. Yeah, about once a year, I have some moment where I feel like God's really real. But once a year is not that great, right? And we, we doubt a lot because we're like, I only hear him about once a year. That's the point. If you will push this up and do it on a weekly basis, the homework, setting it in your phone, it, it alarms, it goes off. Every week it's recurring. You will find that God speaks more often. I promise. This is one I can promise you. If you do this, if you add this power of prayer, into whatever you're launching, and you have this weekly session of prayer, it will absolutely change your life, and God will speak on a regular basis. So take this, enjoy it. I uh, appreciate you following along with these. This one was a, a, a lot more Christianese. If you happen to have randomly came in here, um, I just encourage you. We are talking about launching incredible things, and this power of prayer makes whatever you're launching better. I, I, I promise, even if you're not a Christian, you will be soon. Comment, message, let me know because this is powerful stuff. Uh, hit the subscribe if you're not already subscribed, the notifications, the like, because I would love to continue this journey with you. And we'll see you next time as we go into the queue. What's queue gonna be? You'll have to wait and see.